Hey, we didn't even talk about the spoilers, though. I was going to oh, wait. Oh. I was waiting till the closing was done, and then I was going to mention the fact that I actually love it how we, we sat there and said we were going to get to the movie, and then we ended the fucking show. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I ruined it. I ruined it. I just realized after you said it, I was like, wait, where were the spoilers? I mean, we, we can still, I mean, I'm still recording, so we can still talk for a minute if you wanted to about it. And then I can. Plus, I was just thinking. You guys do. If I, if I, if I ruined that uh, closer to, I mean. Uh, actually, that, hang on. that whole little conversation. That whole little conversation right there actually just made a great cold opening. So, yeah, I think that's our cold open right there. So, yeah, yeah see there? <laughs> You're listening to nothing important. Please enjoy the show. gentlemen this is the nothing important podcast insert witty tagline here i'm brian and with me as always is my homie from another brony dave <laughs> don't act, don't act like you don't watch my little pony dude <laughs> i was waiting for you to i was waiting for you to ask me how it's going well well i i really wanted to call you my homie from another brony you know <laughs> I, i'm just <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying you can't have too many fluorescent colored riding crop butt plugs in your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially the ones with the unicorn tips. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, it gets right to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Bronies. <laughs> uh, hands down, the creepiest, like, subculture of people ever. Probably. Like, they... They really stepped up the game over furries. <laughs> well, I think bronies are a lot creepier for sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's just it's just so weird. And what I love about it is that they're like um, outwardly proud to be a brony. You right. know what I mean? Like it's 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 not like eh, it's just something kind of weird. I'm into. It's like uh, because it's taken this like life of its own to where it's actually in uh, like a very recognizable subculture and i don't know they fucking creep me out i'm trying to think of like a chant like ahoy we're boys we play with little girls toys ah that's <laughs> so good <laughs> you're gonna have to pardon my voice you might have to get your hand on the cough button because i um i have this cold that I can't fucking shake, and I think it's because I have a four-year-old daughter that goes to school. You have a, a walking Petri dish in your house. Oh, my God, yeah. And yeah. it's like, it's totally the classic. She has a cold, gives it to me, and then I give her back the cold, which she just gives back to me. And it just goes around and around in circles of life. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so how's it going, Dave? Um, let me tell you about how big of a geek I am about certain things. Okay. Lay it on me. So the other night I fell asleep in my house uh -huh. to a video of a Frisbee golf tournament playing on my TV off of YouTube and okay. also a video of a different Frisbee golf tournament playing on my computer with headphones on. And that's so you asleep. had... Why are you watching so much frisbee golf? I I don't know. Because <laughs> I've recently <laughs> like is this just something I mean, you recently got into or it's discovered? I recently like, got into, and uh, I just I watched you know the pros so I guess because there's so many different throws in frisbee golf. Mm -hmm. It's not like regular golf where it's like one swing and you can't really tell what's going on. You know, like right. you can actually watch the disc and how it flies and how they release it to get around obstacles and stuff. Because the challenge of Frisbee golf is like going through woods and shit, usually. Uh, right, yeah, okay, you know. so let me ask you this. So is, is are the rules fundamentally the same as golf, like the lowest yeah, lowest numbers of strikes to the... It, it's a basket, right? Like, it's right. like a it's, weird, like... It's a basket, and where, like, golf is, like, you know, be like 300 yards. Uh, mm -hmm. Frisbee golf would be like 300 feet. So it's kind of like a third ah. of the length, you know? And uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Lowest score wins. You got to play it from where your previous shot lies. There's out of bounds. You got to get it in a basket instead of in a hole. 
And uh, so do you do you, do you throw it like a regular frisbee, or or are you like a behind the back kind of guy? I throw it like a regular frisbee. Because even like a regular frisbee, I'm a I'm a like a behind the back kind of guy. Like bring it from behind the hip, mm. and then you know it's like a snap with the wrist. Oh my my frisbee my drive is it's like a baseball swing left handed basically. <laughs> it's like with it's the like wind a, up and everything. Yeah, like I take a you know use the uh, the X step as they call it. It's about it's like a four step throw and you wind up and just explode. <laughs> is there is there I take it there's no carts though, right? Like, because I feel like half of the fun of regular golf is carts. I take it there's no carts in no, frisbee there's, golf. There's no carts. Um, most people have bags. They have a bunch of discs. Have a bunch of discs in their bags, and uh, water bottles, and uh, other so, recreational devices. There. <laughs> <laughs> What what kind of recreational devices would those be, Dave? Because now now I'm uh, I'm super curious. Uh, bottles of liquid that are not water. Ah, gotcha. Okay, obviously, I I feel like you would have to have to drink to do that. But see, that's like an integral part of golf too. Right? Yeah, having they, to drink to. Do. I need a, a name for it though, because in golf it's called swing lube, which is kind of a clever called, thing. They call alcohol co- swing lube. Oh, I get a swing lube. Huh? Yeah. I, I, apparently, on top of uh, not being able to talk, I also cannot hear this. <laughs> I've like, I've like, my boss met with me today at work, and uh, like every other sentence, I was asking her what the hell she just said. <laughs> so I still, I still have no idea what the hell the meeting's about. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go about my business, and when I get an email reminder Wait, that something is, is due, I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting a phone call here. Oh well, pick it up. See if it's see if it's them. Okay. See if it's our guest. Hello, Dave speaking. Hi, Dave. This is Nilda. I'm calling with Michael on the line. Hi, Nilda. How are you? Good. Uh, are you ready for tonight's interview? Yes, we're actually recording right now, so I'm going to ask you if you mind if we put this conversation in the podcast. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let me get Michael on uh, the line so he can join us. <laughs> okay. Dave. Hello. You're on with Michael. Hey, Michael, Dave, hello. Hey, how's it going? Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Let me uh, let me merge Brian into the call real quick, and we'll start this whole thing off. Okay, cool. Brian. Yes. Hello. Say hello to Michael. Hey, Michael. How's it going, my man? Hello, Brian. What's up? How you been? Uh, pretty good. I was I was confused because I could have swore I, I gave my phone number and then I just heard like because uh, it was silent on my end for like a minute and I'm like, is Dave like fucking taking like a sales call or something right now? <laughs> like, so, <laughs> I mean, it's amazing these but, never actually work. <laughs> I I'm, I'm surprised we. I'm one for one though, getting the guest on the phone. I don't understand what Brian's problem is because that was not complicated at all. She called. I heard merge calls and we're good to go. So. See, it just it just goes along with my uh, thing that I always say. Like I like modern technology, even though I'm of that generation, it, it still befuddles me. <laughs> like I, yeah, like I, I, me too. Like I, I like Skype. I, right, thank you. See, exactly. First off, I don't even know what kind of witchcraft they use to make Skype work, but uh, I fucking hate Skype. Like it, it weirds me out so much to be on camera talking to another person who's staring into a camera. I know, and it never works either. It's always like slow and 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 like it lags. And I don't get why everybody likes to do it so much. I don't I'm get a, it. I'm a big fan of the awkwardness <laughs> that the the pseudo eye contact can cause. Like, cause you're you're almost looking like you have eye contact, but it's not quite there. So well, it's a little weird. Yeah, but you're not doing eye contact though, because like the key to it is is you're supposed to look into the camera, but nobody ever looks into the camera. They always look into the eyes of the well, people. Thing because they put that dumb picture of yourself there too so you're just looking at yourself a little bit too like oh is that one right <laughs> exactly uh well real quick ladies and gentlemen it's uh michael Mardell, uh nardelli returning to uh the someone important hotline uh, nothing important podcast uh michael has uh his movie circle it's out on netflix right now and uh, we're glad to have you back my friend thank you thank you for having me back it's gonna either be the best talk ever or the worst because I'm all hyped up on cold medicine today. So we shall see what happens. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. 
Well, Brian, Brian also has a cold, but I just got over mine like five days ago, so we were almost like all on the same page. Right, like it, <laughs> I it, hate it. It's like we're all giving each other like person when I have a cold. It's not a good situation. <laughs> <laughs> We're we're all giving each other like throat aids right now, like like the electronic throat aids by talking over the phone and being all gross. So it's a virus. No, no, we're probably all like sh- shooting up Nyquil, si- silently shooting up Nyquil into our veins. Mm. Oh yeah, totally. Like I'm, the I'm giant uh, fucking Q is talking to me, man. <laughs> 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 so Michael, uh, we were just uh, Dave and I. It's funny. It's funny that you jumped in. Uh, uh, this uh, we were talking about frisbee golf. Are you a big frisbee golf guy? What is, again, it might be the NyQuil. Wait, what is Frisbee? I think I've played it, and I have, like, a vision in my head of what it is, but I'm not. It's distorted. What is Frisbee golf? You, uh, this is Dave's new obsession. Yeah, it's my new obsession. because Well, mostly because it's free, and around here the courses are on, like, wooded, hilly, valley areas, so it's kind of a workout, actually. I'm a big, fat guy, so I like easy workouts. But uh, <laughs> you're just throwing a disc into a basket about 300 to 500 feet away. And it's just like golf, like lowest score wins, lowest score throws to get there. And uh, you got to get into a basket. basket. Is it like the disc where like the inside, it's like a hollow disc. It like looks kind of like a boomerang kind of thing. No, it's a, it's a regular, it looks almost like a, like a Frisbee, um, except they're flatter. They have really hard edges. Um, they're more streamlined to, you know, fly farther. They're, they're almost more like a discus, right? Yeah, they almost look like a discus if you cut a discus in half and then they kind of, I guess, hollowed out the top or whatever. But it looks much like a frisbee. Interesting. You know what? I don't think I've played this. This sounds great, though. Hmm. Is this you guys in Chicago, right? That, that, is. Is, that is correct, sir. Is this we, I was, in Chicago? I think, well, actually, that- um, from what I've, I was just ta- talking about how I fell asleep the other day watching two tournaments at the same time on two different devices because I'm a nerd. And uh, they're all in, like, Oregon. Oregon is big for that. So I didn't know if it trickles down to uh, the Los Angeles area or not. Not yet. Um, but it sounds fun. I would actually, I would do that. It sounds um, – I feel like everything starts in Oregon. I feel like they, get, they are, like, the first ones to do, like, LARPing. Oh, my God. Worldwide. Because they're bored, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess right, if yeah, all you have bored. is rain and trees, they're just like, let's throw discs through these trees when it's not raining. I don't know. <laughs> the um brilliant though brilliant it, it's, from boredom this is true exactly right the uh it, it's funny because uh i was in the virgin islands like two weeks ago and we stayed at a resort that was like in the middle of a of a bay uh i, I think it was like a weston but there was all these uh coconuts on the ground like painted coconuts and I was like, "What? why are all these like nicely painted coconuts all over here? So I was like picking them up and messing with them. And I got yelled at by the groundskeeper, uh, Dave, because they were actually the tea sites for the Frisbee golf. They had a Frisbee golf course throughout the resort. Oh, really? And they just used yeah. painted coconuts as the, as the markers, huh? Yeah. That's- like, I don't know if they were like the markers or like the teas, but, but they were all over the place. And I got yelled at for moving them. Huh, that's pretty cool. In the Virgin Islands. Wow, it's really taken off then, huh? Yeah. This is going yeah, to be on LARPing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how it's going to be LARP like, in the Virgin Islands. Well, it, it's on the move. It's only like the number It's only like the number five, uh, number five sport in the Virgin Islands right now is LARPing. Uh, Frisbee golf is two, and Brony cosplay is number one, actually, <laughs> in the Virgin Islands. <laughs> It's not a sport. It's just a recreation. What was it? Number one was what? Brony cosplay. Oh, brownie, brownie cosplay? Brony. You, do you know what a brony is? It's like male fans of the My Little Pony cartoon? No. Oh. Well, it's it's these <laughs> dudes that... Dudes like, like me and Dave like that dress up and like have like sex parties dressed as like the new characters from the new My Little Pony cartoon. Oh my god, that's amazing! Okay, but let's. They're called, they're called, I, I gotta say this though, not quite dudes like us because we don't actually do it. <laughs> uh, speak for yourself. That sounds sexy, right? <clears throat> right. I'm like I'm like a three time world world champ uh, brony master guy. <laughs> so I take I take I take umbrage with the fact that you just said it wasn't a sport. Uh, I take umbrage, good sir, because it is a sport. Do you consider beauty pageants a sport then? Because I think that's what you're talking about. 
Uh, obviously, Wait, now what does to, umbrage it, mean? Umbrage, that is a great vocab choice, umbrage. And I, I, what does it mean? Takes obse- it takes exception you just, to you. You just dropped umbrage. You can't just drop umbrage and have it not, and have it go it's like unnoticed. It, <laughs> it's like, it's like you take exception to it. Like I was offended by him, uh, by him not accepting uh, Brony as a sport. So I took umbrage with his, with his uh, feelings about it. Wow, this is, this is, a, this is a high class. Uh, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Low breath topics I'm, with exceptions about, about animal sex. <laughs> right. Wow. Well, that's that's why we usually sit around number two hundred eighty three on the personal journals iTunes charts. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> we're well, right now. The other day, we, when we we went and saw uh, Adam Carolla do a live podcast at one of the theaters in Chicago, and our friend that I hadn't seen in years, he, I don't remember what the topic was. He dropped the word nefarious. And I had to stop the conversation and be like, that is the first time in my life I've heard nefarious offhandedly used in a sentence. Nefarious is yeah. a good word. <laughs> that a is a really good word. Umbridge. Umbridge is a good word. I take, I, take, like I, I need to go back to college before we can do another <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I, take, I take umbrage with everybody's refusal to use nefarious in daily language. I take umbrage with nefarious people trying to keep your vocabulary down. Ah, touche, touche. <laughs> My, Michael, speaking of bridge with the fact that I, I have no big words to use to reach out to <laughs> you guys right now. I have nothing. I have nothing. Yeah, but you're like successful and good looking and we're not. So like you got all that, <laughs> you, got, you got all that covered. <laughs> I'm actually, well, I'm, I'm, of, I'm, I'm in, kind of uh, going through my mind. Through, I've watched Circle. Well, one and a half times. I saw the fir- the whole thing and then the second half again. I'm trying to think if you used any big you words. Why did you watch the second half again? I actually walked into a friend of mine's house to visit, and he was watching it. And uh, oh, it's so weird to me. It's still surreal, like because um, people have been posting uh, like uh, Periscope reviews of the of the movie and like YouTube reviews, and it's just weird to to see it like on somebody else's TV because I've been watching it on mine. You know, mm-hmm. different versions of the movie. Um, throughout like post production and all that stuff for mm-hmm. you know a year and a half, so I'm like, wait, how they get that movie? Oh yeah, it's out. I yeah, forgot. it's out. <laughs> <laughs> can we yeah, can we talk that, spoilers? What? Yeah, why not? Is that like, can, can we talk spoilers? Because I don't really care if we spoil. We shit, probably but... should. Why not? Because a lot of people are um, you know like writing into our Facebook group and our on you know whatever it is our um, IMDb message board and all that stuff asking about the ending and spoilers. So. I guess we probably should. Seems like a lot of people have seen it at this point. Okay, for one, yeah. uh, I, I, I do want to say... warn people, we're going to talk about spoilers. Nah, fuck it, they'll figure it out. I am often accused of being somebody that spoils movies, and I really don't mean to. <laughs> I'm the guy that hates it when Especially movies are spoiled. Especially not my own. <laughs> What's that? I'm the guy that hates it when movies are spoiled for me. I do too, but I honestly don't mean to do it. I always feel like I have a good grasp on spoilers, but my friends accuse me of being horrible. But you know what happens a lot of times is I'll guess the ending right, and then they'll be like, you totally spoiled that. And I was like, I just guess. Yeah, I just pay attention to movies, dude. (laughs) Yeah, I can't help it. (laughs) That's I I don't like it when... I don't like when people like claim spoilers for something that's been out for like 10 years. Like, and they think nobody should talk about... It drives me nuts. It's like, I don't know who won the 1939 World Series, but if somebody told me, I wouldn't be upset with the fact that they told me who won the 1939 World Series. <laughs> I it, got yelled at for spoiling the ending of Titanic. That? No, but there would be a lot of people nowadays that probably would be upset by that. Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, that happened immediately like a couple weeks ago. I forget what movie it was, but I was like, yeah, and at the end, so-and-so died. They were like, I haven't seen it. And I was like, well, you missed your shot. Been out for like... <laughs> Been out for like seven years. Yeah. You missed it. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not gonna watch it. Statues of Limitations, homie. Come on now. Exactly. No, I remember I was, I was talking about that. the movie Titanic back in high school, and this girl was like, "Dave, some of us haven't seen the movie yet." And I said, "The ship sinks, dude. Watch the movie." <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. It's it's the fucking Titanic. <laughs> There's only one way that that ends. <laughs> what? Um. Real quick, I I wanted to ask before you guys talk about. Uh, the movie and such. I, I, you brought up something. How does that feel to somehow watch yourself like in a movie? Because I feel like I would be like, oh my God, I can't believe that's me. Like, you know, like you pick apart your own performance. 
Cause like every once in a while, like, uh, I'll be listening to some podcast and then mine will roll through because I'm totally that guy that subscribes to his own podcast and I'll start hearing <laughs> myself and it like creeps me out. Like, it's like a rush to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. That does happen. I mean, yeah, it's weird. Sometimes you, uh, I mean, especially cause I, uh, I was involved in the movie producing it too, that I've seen it so many, I mean, when you're just kind of like an actor for hire, you're kind of more like, well, what's going to happen. But, um, yeah, it is weird. You watch it and sometimes you're, uh, like I can be like, super hypercritical and be like, ah, why did I do this? Or why didn't I do that different? Or I should have said that in a different way or should have been feeling this thing when that happened, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes you'll watch it like, you know, we've had some screens with big crowds and they've like gotten into it and you watch it like, okay, you know, I'm not horrible. Um, you know, and then every once in a while you watch it like, yeah, okay, that was good. But usually it's more like the self-critical eye of like, ah, why? Why do I look like that right now? Why am I making a face? <laughs> Why did I take that big sigh there? That was so fake. You know, uh, stupid things like that that hopefully most people don't notice. But when it's your own performance and you've been like meticulous about creating it, which I'm sure you guys are meticulous with the podcast, you're like, oh no, everyone's going to see that and think I'm a fraud. Oh, yeah. So, wow. Well, um, mostly. Well, it's first like, off, I am a fraud. <laughs> What's that? I think we all started. I, I said. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. That's what we do. <laughs> Go back. I said we're all self, we're all self-loathing, and you know, and, and hate ourselves, and um, and yet we do this profession where we uh, have to listen to or watch ourselves. So that's <laughs> you know, masochistic, I guess. In a way, yeah, yes. you know, it's definitely exposing, so, your, exposing yourself out and, and making yourself vulnerable for people to examine your most innermost. Uh, sensibilities sometimes yes that's true so we're brave then aren't we yes we are brave heroes even yes yeah heroes heroes they use big words (laughs) indubitably (laughs) indubitably (laughs) oh nice one (laughs) (laughs) so michael you also have a a short film uh dennis doesn't live here anymore coming to the chicago uh comedy fest on november 7th yes 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 i'm gonna be there are you guys gonna come uh, uh, yeah, probably. Why? Why the hell not? Awesome. I mean, it's just right, right down. No, right. no, where? Where's it? Uh, where's it located? I was looking it up earlier, but then um, I don't have it in front of me right now. Ah, crap. Where is it? Uh, let me see. I'll look it up while we're talking. Hang on, let me see. <laughs> That's what me and Dave do all the time. Is we just <laughs> play on the computer in the background. We we can pause. We can edit all this. It's not live, so that sounds good. good. By the way, by the way, yeah. why why you're uh, why you're searching? How long are you going to be in town for? Uh, probably just uh, you know three or four days through the weekend. Gotcha. You got big got big plans while you're here. No, I mean uh, I mean I'll probably go to some of the other stuff with the festival, but other than that, I'll just be kind of bumming around Chicago. Oh, gotcha, man! You should hit us up. You love Chicago. What's that? Yeah, I said you should hit us up. I literally live like. Not too far from downtown. Yeah, well, that's I the thing for sure. Um, I'll get your email from Nilda or something, and we can yeah. it. we can figure. Uh, then let's see. Okay, here we go. It looks like why don't I have this written down somewhere? Easier to find. Um, that was the most awkward date proposal I think I've ever heard. By the way, guys. Well, you know, I just got gun shy. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, I don't know. He's gonna he's gonna say no. And then I started getting sad and second guessing myself. But you know what? I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask uh, Michael Nardelli on a date and, <laughs> and see what he says. And <laughs> you know, but now now it's see, but now it's like the now it's like the waiting game, Michael, because like you gave me like a tentative yes, and you're like, Oh, well, I'll talk to so and so and get your information. You know, so now I'm just gonna be sitting here for the next three days just by my computer, be like, Oh man, is Michael gonna email me? <laughs> oh, maybe he'll hit me up on Twitter. <laughs> like uh don't put the I'm gonna, because then I will like it'll be tomorrow afternoon and I'll be like, Oh no, I didn't email Nelda yet. Oh no, he's gonna think I stood him up. Oh no, oh no, no, no. I, I get like total email anxiety about that right. kind of stuff, like if I haven't been Written somebody then, back right away. I'm like, oh no, oh no, they're gonna think I forgot. Oh no, they're gonna think I'm mad at them. Oh no. <laughs> and we'll and we'll do like this. We'll do like this weird dance. Like you know, back in the day, you used to call somebody just to see if they answer, and you'd hang up before like the answer machine. 
picked up. <laughs> yeah. Like it'll be like I'll just like randomly email you for no reason. Be like, oh yeah, uh, I was outside and it started to rain, and I was just uh, wondering what you're up to. And then I'd be like, oh goddamn, why did I say that? Oh, why do I always sabotage myself? <laughs> <laughs> And what if I just write you back and I don't even mention anything about hanging out in Chicago? I'm just like, oh, that's cool. Good to hear from you. I'm like, oh, no yeah, mention of hanging that's, out. That's whatsoever. when I started getting the phone calls. I emailed him and he didn't say anything about hanging out. And I don't, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> what do you think, Dave? And I'll just be like, I'm going to go get some pizza. <laughs> I'll be like, Dave, you know what? I don't think he wants to dress up like bronies and go frisbee golf with us. I just don't think it's in the cards. <laughs> <laughs> he really uh, he really seemed I'll, like he was into it i do it <laughs> he really seemed like he was into it but apparently he takes umbrage <laughs> umbrage to it dave <laughs> umbrage is what did it for me too umbrage is what really turned me on that was the thing okay wait here we go i found uh where is it okay here it's at the new 400 theaters um 6746 north sheridan road did you write that awesome. down, Brian? I, I did. Uh, hold on. Let me find a pen. Let me find a pen. Like, it, it is recorded. They can hear me knocking shit over. I can email this to you. I can email this, <laughs> this hypothetical email that we've discussed. Okay. I'll make sure that whatever we cut out, which might be none of it, um, that will be left <laughs> in there. Where, the location of the... Uh, this is open to the public, correct? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, all right, so. we can we can start that we can start that all over so that at least that part sounds a little better just for promotion wise. All right, Michael. So once again, where or <laughs> once again, see that's how good we do that. All right, Michael, <laughs> tell us about Dennis doesn't live here anymore. Tell you about it. Uh, tell you about Dennis. Uh, it's a short that I wrote, directed. I'm in. I produced it. It's really freaking weird. It's a dark comedy. Um, it sort of is a kind of a satire of coming of age movies with a grown up Dennis the menace in the middle of a quarter life crisis. Um, <laughs> and, uh, he's, he's, uh, trying to live out his glory days, but he's past the age where he can do that. And, uh, he gets into some trouble and, uh, may or may not have a friend intervention happen to him. And there may or may not be a, uh, a dark tragedy surrounding, uh, Mr. Wilson. So mm, if, that is a hilarious concept. <laughs> don't take umbrage with it. Enjoy. It. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just, it was this weird character I created when I was, um, studying at the Groundlings and, uh, just wanted to kind of have this creative exercise and wrote the short and, um, cast a bunch of my friends in it and filmed it over a couple of days. And it, it's, you know, been taken, taken on the festival circuit over the last couple of months. We just won uh best short in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was just at the Savannah film festival, Two days ago, literally two. No, wait, was that last night? Yeah, two nights ago. Um, so it's making the rounds. It's uh, very cool. You know, it's for a, a certain part of the population that appreciates dark, weird comedies. That's awesome. So, wait, <laughs> so wait, when you um, when you when you do these short films um, and you you submit them to festivals, what's, what's the submission process like? Do you, does any can anybody submit one, or is there like an approval board? Well, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, I, um, I submit them through this, this, uh, what do you call it? A website or a, a company called without a box, which is affiliated with IMDB. Um, but there's also like film freeway and all that stuff, but yeah, you, you submit them and then there's a committee that, uh, watches them and selects them. And, um, you know, some of them, sometimes they reject you. Sometimes they get in there with, you know, what's really annoying. Let me tell you, is he, even if they reject you, you still get on the festivals, like, uh, weekly mailing list, which is such a slap in, the, <laughs> slap in the face. Like we've rejected you, but here's all the films that got in. Come see yeah. you next week. <laughs> you're not. It's like working not, at yeah. a restaurant. It's like working at a restaurant where you're like the girl you have a crush on is like obsessed with and keeps bringing in dudes, and you just exactly. have to watch them it's on a dates. real lesson in uh, in 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 staying humble. I guess it really Humility, keeps, yeah. keeps your ego in check. And they're like, <laughs> and they always send this nice email like don't be discouraged if you didn't get into our festival. There's still plenty out there for you. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? I get it. I don't, get it. Don't take umbrage with this. Try again, bitches. Yeah, <laughs> take umbrage. Don't be a hater. Let me in. <laughs> anyway, don't. so I mean, you have to go, you go through that process, you submit it. And, um, you know, if it fits their programming, then you get in. And um, if it doesn't, you don't. And you just keep on applying and, you know, find your homes. 
So uh, make sure that if you are in Chicago, go to the fifth annual Chicago Comedy Film Festival. See, Dennis doesn't live here anymore, but our friend Michael Nardelli. Michael, thank you so much for coming on Nothing Important. Of course. Thank you for having me. Strap on your tampon. It's that time of the month on the Nothing Important Podcast. You're listening to Nothing Important. Hey, we didn't even talk about the spoilers, though. I was going to oh, wait. Well, I was waiting till the closing was done, and then I was going to mention the fact that I actually loved it, how we, we sat there and said we were going to get to the movie, and then we ended the fucking show. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I ruined it. I ruined it. I just realized but, after you said it, I was like, wait, where were the spoilers? I mean, we, we can still, I mean, I'm still recording, so we can still talk for a minute if you wanted to about it, and then I can. Plus, I was just thinking. You guys do? If, I, if, I, if I ruined that uh, closer to, I mean. Actually, that that whole little conver- that whole little conversation right there actually just made a great cold opening. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's our cold open right there. So, yeah, yeah see there, <laughs> never got. Yeah. 
but yeah, man, uh, th- thanks for coming on the the show again. We totally appreciate it, guy. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always, always Wait. fun chatting with you guys. I got to say this it. though, I have to get this out. As far as the movie, best dick move ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that coming? I kind of did, and I was, I was, I was, I was debating with myself, like, are they really going to go there? And I was kind of like, please, fucking, please go there. And then you went there. And then when it was down to the uh, you and the fetus, <laughs> and that can't vote, I was like, holy crap. Awesome. Yeah, I actually, I, I dug it because I like twisted crap like that, man. I, it's, that, that appeals to my dark, dark, dark sensibilities. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the, <laughs> the, the love it or hate it moment. Some people um, <laughs> yeah. are, are writing in and they, they love that it's that it went there and what that says about um you know humanity and our choices and everything and there's some people that are like you guys are sick how could you do that yeah. so <laughs> no i, I i'm th- glad I, you're on the side of love i'm glad you you don't take on bridge with the ending oh no absolutely not i was uh enthralled no that's not the word i don't know but yeah like i i really appreciated i appreciated the movie because it's it's sort of an exploration in our humanity and, and what you do in weird situations like that because i would probably make the same decisions and I, I think that that's the character I most identified with was kind of like kind of quiet, kind of manipulative, let everybody else ruin it for themselves and then just jump at the end and steal the whole <laughs> yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's something for, something to being the kind of a uh, more quiet cerebral one, I think, you know, mm-hmm. like the, the, the louder ones get a lot of the attention, but uh, it doesn't work out for most, for most of those <laughs> in, people. In that, that situation, circle. you don't want attention. Like the guy that didn't say anything the whole time. Obviously, yeah. Like he he made it as far as he could, I guess. Yeah, he did. And I actually I was talking about it the other day. I didn't even realize the little girl, uh, Katie, only had like three lines in the movie, which mm. I did not. I mean, I always thought, oh, yeah, she talks a lot. And then somebody was like, no, she only actually speaks three times. And I was like, shit, you're right. Yeah. There, so, she, she has a lot there, of screen there, time and she has a lot of like crying. She's crying the whole time, right? But actually Yeah, speaking, she's crying, but she really doesn't say much. Right. Um, was that the, is there an alternate ending? Uh, the only alternate ending was that it would end right in the circle before that final vote where it would leave you on more of an ambiguous note of, you know, did the baby live? Did Eric live? What happened? Or, and, you know, and also was that really, were they really in a spaceship? Were the, you right. know, it left things a lot more ambiguous. Um, but and it was kind of, some people prefer that, um, and I could see why, but but a lot of people like that we actually gave a little bit more, you know, finite resolution to it with mm. the, the thing outside of the circle at the end, which, I mean, I personally like that just because I've, I've had enough of, like, the, the ambiguous ending for a little while. But right. I could see where, like, on a, you know, psychological level, cerebral level, that might be more interesting to leave things a little bit more open. What do you think? I I like the closure, I guess. Most people want the closure. And uh I was kind of glad. Like I I did I wasn't sure how I would react like to if if it would show anything outside of that situation. I thought it was going to be like a completely enclosed, you know, one set piece, nothing else happens. But when you wake up outside and it's like okay, it kind of wraps it up kind of nicely cuz then my my friend I was watching it with, he's like so what does that mean? He's like, what are the other people standing there? Are they all survivors of the same situation too? And I was like, well, that's a good question. That's kind of open, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people have different theories on, on who those people are. I mean, they, they're meant to be survivors of other circles, you know, mm. that's why there's a lot of, I think there's like two or three pregnant women and a lot of little kids. Yeah. I did notice that. Um, yeah. And then you're the only asshole. Yeah. It's sort of just, like, <laughs> <laughs> everyone else was yeah, cool. And that's what I always laugh about. I told the director, uh, you know, other people have asked me, I'm like, well, I think, in, you know, to me, <laughs> probably those other circles were a lot more peaceful and everybody just kind of stepped off and let the kids win or, you know, whatever. But right. our, ours was like the nasty one where everyone's like, you suck. No, you suck. And you're racist and you're ugly and you're this, <laughs> you're this. you know, like ours got so nasty. And then some douchebag, my got my character just kind of <laughs> walks away from it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's what those are meant to be other survivors. And then, you know, it's sort of open to interpretation if they're going up for another round or if they're done or if they're just left there to, you know, rebuild civilization. We right. shall see. 
Ah, sequel in the future, huh? We shall see. I, I hope so. I mean, I think it'd be cool. I think there's more uh, of the mythology of the game and everything to get into. As long as you call um, it the squared you know, circle. People... <laughs> the squared circle, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, or like, we joke, like, it could be called rhombus or... Uh-huh. Rectangle or See, I, I would go. I would go sphere and add another dimension. Oh, uh, uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I didn't think about that. It's like dual, dual layered. Yeah. Circles with people up above. Get all get you can get all thinking with it. That'd be pretty dope. Yes, it would. And if you need help with the okay. department, well, we'll just steal, we'll steal that idea. Hope that's not recorded. We'll just steal that. It is recorded. <laughs> um, just uh, get me uh, some work through it somehow on the audio department, and we'll call it even. Or do you want to be in the movie and just die? <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> I would I would love to die yeah. a horrible, horrible death in a movie. That would be awesome. Don't even need a yeah, line. Let me say, I think Don't need those pain death it. scenes were pretty fun for all the people that did them. I think they had fun like launching themselves back on a mattress. So. <laughs> <laughs> It was pretty cool. I, I thought it was send really us your well. audition. Sweet. So, oh, would you say send 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 you my audition? Yeah, send us your death audition. Oh God! <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> I'll find I'll find in, For real. I'll find ingenious ways to kill Dave. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I got to go. I got to go take care of uh, my sick little baby. Uh, Michael, awesome uh, talking to you again, my friend. I uh, didn't mean to be awkward earlier, but yeah, man, if you want to, if you're bored in town, hit us up. Dave and I are always down to hang out. Yeah. And um, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to email Nilda right now so that there's no delay and that this, this uh, nerd date is set up. Awesome. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Well, and I'll bring my, my, my furry costume too. Brony. Awesome. Bronies. Furries Brony, is too Brony general. Costume. <laughs> Furries are very general. We're very specific to bronies. Mm-hmm. Yep. Brony. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. No worries. <laughs> All right, dudes. I'll Thanks, talk to you soon. Be sure to follow Nothing Important online at nothingimportantpodcast.com. Find us on iTunes, on Twitter at Not Important PC, and you can also find us on Facebook. Nothing Important is recorded with help from Third City Sound in Joliet, Illinois. Thanks for being awesome.